adults um, started out of the fact that I'd made um, about five records in a row with my band She Hard, who I've been with since I'm 18 years old at Wellington High School. I called up like all my friends that I've that I really respected, you know, like um, and even some people that I'd, I was there were more acquaintances that I was like, whoa, I'm a total fanboy, and I basically went, let's just get together and make some music. And, and came up with this album called The Adults. And I mean, The Adults was like a, it was this tongue in cheek sort of thing because we're all a little bit older. Even though we all felt like we were, because we're musicians, we all still feel like we're 18 in our heads, you know, so. Um, so yeah, and that was it. While I was making that record, which was predominantly made in Auckland, New Zealand, I met my now wife, who was the daughter of a UN Sudanese diplomat who decided to, on a whim, to go and study at AUT after growing up in Finland, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Virginia, Ethiopia, and then ended up in New Zealand of all places. The group that I, that played at our wedding that I ended up using on this album was um, um, a group of sort of five or six. I mean, it, they, it moves around, you know, but they usually have a, a, a leader. The leader of this band was a woman called Gisma, who in Sudan is a fucking rock star. If you get Gisma to play at your wedding, you're macking it. And we luckily got Gisma to play at our wedding and they play a traditional form of music called Arani al Banat, which translates to girls' music. And it's only performed and written by girls' music. It's amazing. And it was just basically like organic dance music. And to my Western ear, it was like, that's the start of a new MIA track. Or that's the start of a Beyonce song that I haven't heard yet if she got the right producer. I fell in love with it straight away and I said, I'm gonna come back next year and record with you guys. I want people to hear it. And um, they were, I think they were like, yeah, whatever. Sure, people will say that and they won't do it. But I did, yeah. So I went back next year and recorded with them. So from there, it was like a matter of going, okay, all my demos and all these arrangements I'd made, yeah, they're cool, but I'm not an engineer, man. I'm just a songwriter. And I'm recorded most of it on uh, iPhone, so you know, it's like um, pretty low fi Okay, well, let's get someone who knows about Sonic. Hence, Demon Abrams from Pacific Heights, formerly of Shapeshifter, and those records are huge sounding. Now we can start sending it out to, like on the old adults record, now we can start sing it, sending it out to other people to sing on. People like Jess B, Astia, Chelsea Jade, Aradna, and Razor Beezer. I got a call from an old friend, Johnny Too Good years ago. He's like, oh, I want to catch up. I've got some um, some beats to show you. I had no idea what he, what he was going to show me. <clears throat> Picked him up, went for a cruise in my car in Wellington. It was a beautiful day. And Johnny showed me all his phone recordings that he had recorded when he was back in Sudan for his wedding. And I was like, these are amazing. He had put some, a few little Ableton beats to them and some bass lines. And so like, this is great. Well, what are you doing with us? And he was like, oh, I'm going to make a new adults record. And I was like, wow, cool, man. It's great. And we started talking about, I'd just released The Stillness. And he was like, oh, would you be interested in doing some production? And I was like, fuck, this is left field. I love it. Let's, let's do it. So we kind of started there. It was very much like a musical conversation. And then we, we cracked into it. I've never been to Sudan. Um, and I don't have the intimacy with the culture that John does, but a big thing for me was getting the blessing from the people involved before we started making the record. So I was like, Johnny, you know, you need to go back to Sudan and, and get the, uh, the blessing for this um, and know that we're, we're doing right by this, these traditions, this music. And Johnny went back and showed the band that had played the, I think it was Hadja and maybe Boomtown and they, they really liked the songs. and. Yeah, it was really interesting because we had to work with phone recordings. Um, John had recorded all these parts just on his phone. And we're like, I always said to him, like, you gotta go back and record this shit properly. And he was like, oh, man, you know, it's hard enough finding the musicians, let alone good recording gear. We're just gonna have to use the stuff on my phone. So I've never had to do a record where I've used MP3s off a phone to make releasable music. But um, that's what we had, and that was part of the magic and the vibe of those honest recordings, was getting that in there. And, yeah, it was, it was beautiful, beautiful music, Sudanese music. I had no interest in singing on this record. All I've been listening to, apart from the Sudanese music, was hip hop. Who's who's a good MC from New Zealand? Well, Kings was uh, is interesting because I missed the whole phenomenon because I live in Melbourne. I just read this thing about this guy that had shot a video on his iPhone for his song, and it ended up being number one for longer than any of Lord's songs. I was like, what the 
fuck's going on there? The morning I sent him what became Take It On The Chin, the bit of music, he instantly e emails me back and goes, oh, Johnny, it's an honor. I just want to say, uh, me and my, my crew used to like skateboard to pacify our album. I was like, oh, okay, cool, because I just know you as this hip hop dude. But that's cool, awesome. He goes, I'll be back to you soon. And I was thinking, yeah, cool, I'll, I'll see him in maybe, maybe four weeks or, you know. And then literally two hours later, he came back with Taken in the Chat. Verse, chorus, pre-chorus, everything. And I was like, that is a seriously talented human being. Yeah, so um, I, I was in my studio. John sent me an email. I was already stoked that John was. I actually kind of didn't believe it was him. He was like, oh, John. I got to writing, man. It took three hours to write the, the the verse. I wrote the first verse, sent it back, and he was like, just can you write another verse? And I was like, cool. So I wrote two verses, and then he was like, yeah. And um, do you just want to maybe try a hook? And I was like, okay, because this, this is my song. Like, what's going on? So I'm singing the hook, doing the verses, and um, then he just he, he added this powerful like chant, the la 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 that you'll hear and take it on the chin. So, I mean, that was how the song developed and it was real natural, real fast. I think he, he mentioned it was the fastest song that they made on the album. The title song, Haja, is this like mambaton thing with like a bunch of Sudanese women playing drums in this live room and uh, it's like that for six minutes. And it's like my favorite track on that one. The word Haja is an Arabic word in a Sudanese context. It is basically uh, a respectable term for an older, woman or a more experienced woman. It basically denotes that you definitely have lived and that you're experienced. And it's a it's definitely not it's not a it's not a put down, it's it's a respectful term. And I just thought, well, you know, I'd say the average age of the woman that I worked with in Sudan, I mean they were between fifty and seventy five. Yeah, I just thought it was it was a perfect name for the record. Mm.